Okay, in this video we're going to talk about a couple things, but the main thing is with all these new changes to gun laws, restrictions, changes in definitions, changes to the form 4473, and pending legislation and changes to uh, gun laws, has anybody figured out what the hell is going on or are they as confused as I am? Now, I tried to cover several of these topics here the past month, all right, with pistol braces, polymer 80s, you know, the can can in here was uh, for a time restricted and all this other stuff. I did a video on the changes to the uh, 4473 form, which happened this year also, uh, and that uh, Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. So, I'm at a loss. These legal channels come out, I'm not saying they're wrong, but it's like sensationalism or what people call clickbait. And, oh, it's dead, it's gone, it's this, it's that. But when you try to get a concrete answer, and if you watch these 20 minute long videos, there's some sort of an appeal, and, and this matter is not over. The government and its underhanded shit for gun control ain't going to just go away. So let's go back, and I just got off the internet, you know, searching. Let's start with the first thing that got banned, bump stocks. I never owned one. I mean, you were a neat thing. And what it is, you put a little spring in the stock. And when you pull it, if you hold your finger still or your hand still, it fires like a machine gun. Though it is not a machine gun. And in all of these different things I've seen where there is a court thing that threw this out. So when you put a Google search in and go, are bump stocks legal? You find that most of them say no. And you, I found one weird website that lists all the states that they are legal and the states that they are not legal. Okay? Confusing, isn't it? Well, I guess in 2023 they went to court and said that it does not meet the legal definition of a machine gun. So, they're not illegal. They can't be termed as machine guns. The bump stocks. But try to find out if it's illegal in your area and try to find one. I really couldn't find any for sale. Okay, so I don't know. Again, legal. Some people say it is legal, like here in my state, North Carolina. Some people say it is not. Who knows? The internet says, oh no, it's not legal. But yet, the lawyers and that said they overturned it. Now, I'm not really sure about the can cannon. This is something new. I guess it's not legal because you can buy the damn thing. I mean, I found it online fairly simply. Uh, but at one time, the ATF was going to reclassify this foolish thing. And again, bump stocks. Oh, it's dead. Oh, it's not. This and that. And there's confusion. See, where all of this crap is going, there's a lot of confusion. Several people asked me about these. And they said, like, in some states you have to destroy them and send photographs that you saw this in half or whatever. Or you can be fined. Okay. If they're legal, not legal, I have no idea. Okay. Um, you know, there's it's, from what I've seen, they said, hey, you know, they all put this big video on. We won. You know, they're legal. Now there's some sort of injunction or something, they're going back in an appeal, and really none of these have been definitely resolved. Okay, and then on the other hand, another thing that's confusing is even if federally these are legal, in some states they are not. They have a state law that says they're illegal. So there you go. Same with polymer 80s. You can still buy frames, you can still get them. <clears throat> One individual told me in his state, even the unfinished frame, 
Okay, without anything being cut or something, the state law requires the 80% frame must have a serial number on it. Okay, so I don't know. And all of these videos and that just confuse the hell out of you watching them more and more again. So now, the bipartisan safety thing, and this is the new news flash coming out, everybody, you know, ATF's going to ban private ownership of guns, everyone's going to have to become an FFL dealer, and basically, that's an exaggeration and a load of shit, okay? Because I had the new form 4473 here, and I went over and I made a video on it. If you look on this form, something I kind of overlooked, because, you know, I never thought that this would be required as law. If you look at number eight at the top, you know, and on the top here it shows you, you have to put the guns. Uh, check any of this, if this is a pawn, redemption, total number of firearms being transferred. And then number eight. Check if any of this transaction is to facilitate a private party transfer. They already have it on a firearms trans, you know, uh, transaction record. It's already there. Check this box if it is a private party transfer. Okay. So where everyone's confusing the hell out of everyone with this is if you're selling guns, yes, and that's one way of looking at it, they say if you sell more than one or two guns a year or something, privately, whatever, that you must be a licensed FFL, or they're going to say if you go to a gun show and have a table at a gun show, you must possess an FFL license in order to rent a table at a gun show. Okay? So, say they pass this into a federal law. You can no longer uh, privately sell guns. And there are several states where this is true. Washington and New York State uh, are one of them. So, if I wanted to sell you this handgun, okay, and I say I want to make a private transaction, <clears throat> there's no restrictions, no nothing. So, what I would have to do is go to an FFL. Give them the firearm. It would take the serial number off of this firearm. Okay, and he would put this firearm from me, just like if I was going to sell it to him. Okay, he would take the gun, fill out the proper paperwork, place this gun in his inventory. Okay, from me. The person who was going to buy the gun from me would then have to go... Fill this out, do the background check, just like he's getting it. And again, the FFL, you know, this is all on his records now, okay, transfers a gun to the person. Probably charge a fee and all this other stuff, no big deal. So, by the new ruling, uh, you're doing it legally, okay, no problem. They're not going to impede you, you can still sell your gun. You'll have to probably pay a little extra to have the dealer do it. But, is this a way of tracking firearms and recording? Which, when they brought <clears throat> these forms out, that is still against the law. See, it's something else nobody else says. Somewhere in that 1968 gun law, they brought about these papers. Okay. It says in there that it is illegal for the government to keep a registration of all firearms. Okay, uh, in other words, a national firearms registry. It's uh, wrong, illegal. So, right there, they're kind of victim themselves, unless they go back and change that law. So, that's your first catch. And as we went over this uh, paper, you know, the confusing questions like, do you live inside city limits? Yes, unknown, whatever. And then all of this, are you intending to sell it? But the question is, when it gets down to 21N1, 21N2, are you an alien who has been admitted to the United States non-immigrant visa? And you check either yes or no. 
if you are such alien, do you fall within the uh, exceptions of the stated and instructions used? Okay, and then in parentheses it says U.S. citizens nationals leave 21 and 1 and 21 and 2 blank. Now I've been to some places where they tell you don't check them. Check one. You know, it's confusing. Alright? So, say you check one of these things wrong. If you're doing it in a big box store with the electronic thing on a little tablet, if you make a mistake and you say, oh gee, I made a mistake, I answered one of the questions wrong, you the purchase is locked out and you're locked out of the computer for two weeks or a month or something, you can't buy the gun, you know, on a mistake, clerical error. Alright, <clears throat> so, when I did the thing of how, and I've seen the other videos, how the ATF is trying to uh, revoke or force people out of business by uh, revoking their license, if there is a mistake on this form, that's how they're going to do it. And this form is written in a very confusing way, where it's fairly easy to make a mistake on this. Now, some places, like I said, you do fill them out electronically, okay, on a tablet. And then, of course, when you do it on a the tablet, they do print this thing out, filled out for you, and that is what they keep on file. But if you make a mistake, there's a problem. And if they review this paperwork for the dealer, the FFL dealer, and it's not filled out correctly or there is a, a mistake of some sort on any of these forms, they can revoke their license. So yes, it's confusing. It's uh, an actual effort by the government to thwart and interfere with legal gun transfers, transactions, uh, changing the definition of things, making them illegal machine guns, or I forget they didn't know what the hell to do with the can cannon. Uh, they called it something else or went into some other categories other than weapons or something. Uh, <clears throat> but the problem is when you hear so much about this and, and the people on the legal videos on YouTube. I'm not doubting that they're wrong or giving us the wrong information. They, they supposedly are lawyers. Some of them do practice law and have an office. Um, but now there's so much confusing stuff that when you go out to a gun shop, I said, you know, are bump stocks illegal? One person says, no, they're not. One person says, yes, they are. People tell me that, well, I heard in this state, and unless you destroy this, just having this, I guess, lying around, uh, you know, is an issue. Okay, uh, so there's a ton of confusion. And all of this and what they're doing, even if these things get overturned, there is such confusion, and we all know that certain people control everything on the Internet, it's awful difficult to find that, I think it was in early this year, 2023, that this thing was overturned uh, on the bump stocks. But you really can't find any information that definitely says, hey, you know what? This has been overturned by the courts. Pistol braces, you know, are back to where they're legal again. Uh, Bump stocks are illegal again, uh, and the scary thing is they're going to come up with this bans on uh, private uh, transfer of firearms. We, we haven't even seen the draft yet on that, so there's all kinds of confusion, mayhem, and everyone going nuts. Oh, and I can't forget the triggers, binary triggers or whatever, or whatever triggers are being, uh, they show the ATF coming to your house and wanting to know what you did with the trigger or where it is or whatever. Um, again, that's another one. I don't know anything about it. I don't have one. I never did. But it's confusing. It's crazy. And, you know, do the police know? 
or if they see you with one of these, are they going to burn you? Uh, there's no clear answer. And it, it, part of the problem is all these lawsuits and all these things being overturned is actually making more confusion and there's no clear answer to it. Okay, then like I said, the side kicker is, even where I live, I know that the state law, there is no state law of banning uh, pistol braces, um, but are, are they legal or not? See, that's, that's what I mean. In some states, there are, you know, laws. So there's a lot of confusion you don't know, and say, you know, you got this thing in the car and you happen to drive over a state line. Then what? Hmm. All right, so that's, I just wanted to fill you guys in. It's a load of crap. It's really confusing. And if I find anything definite, you know, and even then, finding anything definite one way or the other is almost impossible because you'll find something else out there or somebody else making a video telling you something else. But the one thing is, if you live in a state and the state doesn't have any rules, I wouldn't panic. And that's why I'm going to go on to make another video about the panicking and getting people all worked up over this. All right then, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, and stay tuned.